and a plane, and Superboy, and Supergirl, or Superman. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. And you're listening to Krypton Report. Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and pop. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Hi, guys. My name is Solomon Archer Patrick. I want you guys to understand Stargirl, the show, and I'm going to talk about Stargirl with you. And it's a really cool show. So do you watch Stargirl before? It's a really cool show. So, like, check it out. Stargirl's a great show. And I want you to guys say Stargirl. It's the best one i ever seen. Because they fight, fight, fight. And when they fight, they end the stream. They destroyed the Justice Society of America. All right? So, watch Targo. And watch the last season. Welcome to the Krypton Report. This episode, we're pretty much not going to talk anything about Superman, which is weird. But we're going to talk some DC because you know what? We just had two shows end, like within a week of each other. What are we going to do with our lives now? I know. So I think they they ended the same week. <laughs> uh, no, because it ended on the Thursday, and then that following Monday is when Star Girl ended. Oh, okay. Because to uh, yeah. So, anyways, we're going to talk about season two of Doom Patrol and season one of Star Girl. And since you know I don't ever do a show alone anymore because that sucked for a period of time, I have the voice of God on Earth, James, with us. And the disciple, Brian. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I thought that was Morgan Freeman, but whatever. Nah, it's more like Tom, it's more like Tom Hanks. But um, I just picture... Uh, the voice of the devil on earth, Brian. <laughs> and the crowd goes quiet. But we're, 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 we're hanging out here. So, first of all, we'll go around. Uh, just a quick summary how did you, what did you think of Doom Patrol season one, Brian? Just a quick summary. Season one or season two? Season one. You're just your thoughts of it. Like when season one ended, where were, where were you at as you were preparing for season two? Uh, season two, I mean, really excited. Like I, I wanted to see what, what Dorothy could do. I, I wanted to see what the dangers were of Dorothy. I, I wanted to see, you know, if, if, uh, if they would ever get, if they would ever get big again, how they were going to get big again. Um, I wanted to see more of Larry's story. Uh, Larry's story was very compelling to me, very interesting to me. Um, you know, I wanted to see if he could ever have his family again. Um, I wanted to see if uh, Rita would ever get more confident, like being a hero. Um, I, had, I had a lot of hope for the second season. Um, I was interested to see where, where the villains would go, you know, if it would just be things in Dorothy's mind. Um, I want to see, you know, if we would get some other cameos of uh, of other heroes and stuff. Um, you know, how how are we going to handle the fact that we can't uh, we can't trust Niles? You know, Niles caused everything. Um, I felt that was just a really interesting concept, like how everybody's going to handle things, because you know, Cliff. I mean, Cliff had a life. <laughs> you know, it wasn't a very great life, but uh, Cliff has Cliff can't have any human feeling. Cliff can't have uh, any taste, any smell, and just knowing that Niles caused all that, I want to see you know where Cliff's story would go. You know, with his daughter, um, I, I thought it created just a very interesting aspect to see things, see things where things were going to go. Um, you know, I was really excited for it. Uh, what do you think, James? Well, we already discussed season one before, and I loved it. I mean, how could you not? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think, <laughs> I, th- I, think uh, I think 
with the Doom Patrol for me, um, I didn't. I, I was familiar with Grant Morrison's work on Batman, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, I loved where he, his head was at with Batman. Um, but I'd never read Doom Patrol before. Um, I never uh, went into that in my part of, of Morrison. Um, but watching that show and just seeing just all this craziness just kind of come together, um, I was just really, really excited. So, uh, Tyler had to step away for a second. So, I'm not sure what you want to do next. Let's check out the case. Okay, so, Doom Patrol, Season 2. We start off with, they are in the painting. Uh, Larry's, <laughs> Larry's making them pancakes. Um, with extreme attention to detail to getting the size right and making sure that they can actually eat it. I thought that was a pretty cool concept. Um, but when you see Those that, tiny pancakes for them were still huge. They still were. <laughs> they were still massive pancakes for that for those little little people. <laughs> it was it was awesome. Um, I was oh man, it was so cool. Um, we see that, uh, well, I might, I might have been, well, we see that, uh, Cliff is going to feed the rats, and he just spends most of his time just killing rats. Um, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, yeah. kind of seemed like he was more or less interested in, like, beating the rats up, just, like, wailing on them, until he got really upset with the chief. And then he, yeah. then he came back wearing the rat skin. Right. Um, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember this for the first episode. Oh, then we, and then I mean the big thing. We see that in order to get them out of the painting, that Niles has to make quite the sacrifice. Uh, what? What was the? Uh, what was the uh, Knights Templar guy's name? I just call Willoughby him. Kipling. He was crossed between Constantine and Crowley. Because that's all I can think about. Well, so, it's, Crowley. it's asked to Constantine. Drinking, you know, more drinking Constantine. And, uh, and he gives up his penance that essentially gives him immortality. And yeah, it's a long, it was a longevity charm. And then, uh, and then we get to meet Dorothy. So what, what were your thoughts on Dorothy? Just first first impression. In season one? Keeps expanding. Like I don't yeah, even before. even like in Game of Thrones, where I feel like everything just kept expanding, you felt you got some sort of like straight story. Um so like with season two, I had hoped to to you know speed up the process of like Cliff's recovery. Or Rita, like, finding herself. So I feel like when we got into season two, um, I feel like Cliff had jumped backwards to the point where I had messaged James, like, did I miss something from season one? Because they were all talking about how Niles caused their problems. Like, did I miss, like, a big scene or something where it's revealed that Niles caused Cliff's wreck and all this stuff? And No, that scene happened. So I'm like, I just was like, I feel like, did I blink out well, on stuff? It wasn't or? like, yeah, like I said, it, it was. wasn't like he, he, they, they went into a description on how he caused everybody's accident. But like, I kind of feel it was like, just said that he was responsible. But I kind of feel like in season two, that's all put in the back burner once they're like, oh, now this is going to die now. And like, Cliff was still pissed. But everybody else is like. Uh, okay. You know, like the most interesting characters to me because I feel like the character, like they all had kind of growth in this season, which I liked, but some of us just felt like slowly redundant. Um, you know, the Sex Patrol episode was interesting, but felt almost more filler. Like this is the story you're giving me, 
And the only thing I really am getting out of this episode was Dorothy being tempted to want to grow up and Rita having more of the memory about what her mother was like, which could have been into like another episode. Other than that, like, yeah, you kind of have like Danny the street moving on with everyone. But I'm like, I, I, I don't want to feel like I'm watching a filler episode on a series like this. I mean, it was still important for the, um, for the overall story as, you know, for Danny not wanting to be her, her prison anymore, for um, Niles and Dorothy. Unfortunately, the way, you know, jump into the end, unfortunately, the way it ends, like, on a cliffhanger, um, there's no payoff to that. There's no payoff to, to, to the story, to the story itself. So, like, everything that happened this season, like, <laughs> it all just hit this cliffhanger and, and we had no resolution to the entire season. I, I feel like, I feel like Tyler's trying to say the same thing I'm thinking. There's no payoff to anything. Yeah. I mean, we do know that it was cut down by one episode because of COVID. And so episode nine ends up being the end of the season. So we have to take that into consideration. It's not like where yeah. Supergirl had filmed a little bit and they had used some stuff to kind of make some sort of an ending Flash kind of did the same thing. This was just like done. Well, well, we we, we get introduced to to the uh, the time. Oh gosh, what's his name? Time the time guy. I mean, that was cool. the villains for this one were Dr. cool. Time. Like I felt we got more like unique villains because we had like almost like a new villain each episode, which was kind of cool. We had Doctor Time, which like we could have expanded on. We had uh, Red Jack. Red, Red Jack, which was a creepy ass uh, character. And really interesting character. Yeah. I thought he was awesome. Like. So not as creepy as the one character in uh, season one when they were in the underground in Jane's mind. Which one are you referring to? The one that was creepy. creepy. Oh, okay. Looked like it was like, you know, <laughs> I, I can't remember. I, I don't even have a name. It just looked like a creepy creature. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Louis, Louis, Louis. I'm not sure which personality you mean. In, it it wasn't a personality. It was like something else that was down there. It has to be. Well, it, it, was, it was in that episode. It was like covered in like a black cloth, like nail, like claws. As her and Cliff were running around. Ah, crap. I'll, I'll find it later. Well, I think, well, how season two ended, it could have been that. How season two ended was just Dorothy like, I'm going to fight and scene. It's like the way the Woody's roundup ended, okay? Woody and Bullseye were... <laughs> you don't like this story? No. Yes. They were going off to save everyone, and the series was canceled. So no one ever knew if everyone got saved, okay? And, I mean, I, I give it a pass just because of, like I said, like, we know they got a, a cut short. Because I even said to you guys, like, man, I don't know if I'll be able to wrap stuff up. In... And you know what? I'm, prob- I, I'm probably... Um... People probably knew that that they were gonna have a season three. And that's what I'm, I'm hoping I mean, we'll find out. And then like, it'll be one of those where the first episode will be what episode ten should it be, and then they'll the second episode will have like a pull time, time stamp. Even Titans, like I, they muddied up that episode weirdly. But anyways, yeah. Okay, we're, we're, like we're, like when she walks away from her father and she's automatically a year older. Yep. Yeah. Hair's different, makeup's different, everything. <laughs> <laughs> but in Doom Patrol, for, in Doom Patrol Season 1, Mr. Nobody, what was his end game? Like, what was his po- whole point to everything? Dude, I don't remember, because I'll t- to be honest with you... Basically to make Niall suffer, and right. it wasn't really like... There wasn't really like this master plan to, like, kill Niles and the Doom Patrol. It was basically to make Niall suffer and kind of just be this, this bad guy that doesn't, that doesn't fulfill any like real, like world takeover type he's, plan. He's more, even an, though he has like the ability to, he's more of an antagonist. Cause he's just like antagonized. Now. And I think Doom Patrol is looked at. And it's one of those things I like about it is, it's like a love-hate, basically, is because it's more of a character study. 
each thing is based on character and Fair studying enough. the character more than it is about Fair the enough. team. And it, it's much more of a different show than, say, the formula, the formulaic nature that we've gotten from the CW series. Um, so in that, I get it. But at the same time, it's like sometimes I just want things to happen. Like, and we get that sometimes, but I feel like everybody's story just kind of moves at a snail's pace. But in this season, I feel like we did progress a little farther. You weren't the, I was gonna say you weren't you weren't as big of a fan of season one as I was, and and how how great of a character study it is. Um, I I mean I how, love the characters. Like I really liked Larry's story and his character, and that's something that carried over into season two. I think they did a much yeah. better job, but I almost would have preferred more of it. You know, um, when things happened, uh, the way they, I mean, this is a spoiler field, but like, you know, when his son ends up shooting his son's son, so like Larry's grandson gets shot Mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah, Um, because he brought in the Bureau of Normalcy um, to try and capture uh, his dad again. And during during a shootout, yeah, his Larry's grandson got shot. And I mean, I love the I love more digging into the rich backstory of Kay. You know, and Miranda. And then we're even alluded to that the Miranda that we have isn't really Miranda. Um we got from a directorial point from a directing point of view, I think the Yeah, that was pretty crazy how she made such a terrible choice and 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 they assigned a new primary. They, it was pretty wild. From a directing point of view, I don't like the way that they cr- did the creation of Jane. Yes. I think they could have. It went on too long. It went on too long, and it's it like you don't. Very uncomfortable. It was very. I, I think. I mean, I think that is entirely the point. Um, I mean, the reason that the reason that Kay has so many split personalities is because of what her father did, including that. Yes. Including that to her when she was a child. No, I get um, it. Not to mention all the other things that she did. I mean, it was, I mean, it was entirely meant to, to, to be awkward and to, and to show how it's actually like affecting her and effectively making it so that she made the, that, that poor decision and was taken from her position. No, I, I agree with everything you just said. But I'm saying the way it was staged and shot, and I can give you like a scene-by-scene scene breakdown because you could have been more effective by focusing on her and what she was going through than spending these wide-angle shots. Like you could have done quick cutting and flash cutting and submissive cutting and more juxtaposition between your shots – to really hit the emotional trauma she was facing so that, and then um, just from like an artistic point of view, I feel like some of it's just like, okay, how long can we hold this? How long can we do this? And it just like, it's like, come on, like speed up a little bit of the story here. Like with the way you're directing and moving your camera. Um, But we do get to see a glimpse of Jane don't we? Like as the conductor looking lady on the train? Or did I misinterpret that scene? No, no, some of her personalities look like her, and some of her personalities do not. Because I thought we got, uh, we got a the shot. The conductor on the train uh-huh. looks exactly like Jane, like it's Diane Guerrero. It's, a, it's another okay. character. It's another, but yeah, it's just another one of her personalities, but it's one that looks exactly like she normally, like she does in the real world. And that's like what I thought, like, because we saw like uh, this person I get on the train and going. And that's when like Jane appears. And so, I mean, I thought like that whole like her story was cool, like with the well and like even her and Larry going, um, I thought was cool. Um, I like how they kind of worked in a little bit more like pairs. Like we had Cyborg working with uh, Elasta Woman, right? You know what they eventually Elasta call her? Elasta Girl. It's one of those, like, shifts. Um, 
And then we had Larry working with Jane in that part. And then we had Larry and like, they always kind of worked in pairs more than did like a full on much of a group, um, which was kind of neat, like to get differences. You had Jane and Cliff and see, see, see my wife watches the show with me. Not a, not a big superhero fan, but she watches star girl. She watches Doom Patrol with me and she loves Jane. My wife loves Jane. She's like, my wife said, you know, the great thing, the great thing about Jane, what makes her so good is that, and, and how Jane was created, is just the whole fact that you have this little girl that whoever she should depend on, she can't. And I think, I think my wife kind of relates to that as she grew up. And that's why my wife loves Jane so much. Is this, you just have, you know, you have her dad was supposed to protect her, keep her safe. Her dad was a monster. And then you have she her splits her personality starts splitting, and her primary personality is supposed to keep her safe, but still too trusting. Mm -hmm. Just like the the real K personality, still too trusting. It's like I feel like Miranda was a version of K. Yes. Like it's the closest personality right. we have to actual K. Right. And there is so Jane had to be created out of this severe trauma as the protector. And when Jane is like, okay, I'm gonna get this. Uh, was it a was it a rabbit? Or was it? I'm trying to remember what the what the what the stuffed animal was. Was it a rabbit? The it was a rabbit. Yeah. Right. And Henry. Like, I gotta get this. And Miranda's like, I know I know what the kid needs. I know what the kid needs. But Jane had to prove herself that because she was created out of necessity to protect mm -hmm. and to, to protect Miranda to protect all the personalities. And Jane had to prove herself in that point that she was worthy of everything. That she can't protect herself. And I think that that's just a great story for for, for women, for you know, uh, young people, just period. That, yeah, um, I just I just wonder how Jean is going to get out of the well and and take back the underground. No clue, but I'm very free to see. I want to see a really yeah. cool scene of like showing Diane Guerrero's like talent where she's like fighting or doing something like on the physical world. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, like she's just, I mean, instantaneously shifting because they're all trying to come up she's like, like the underground's fighting. So they're all popping up and she's just like into like everything. Like it would be awesome to watch just, um, but Cliff and Cliff, I liked in this season, but at times he was a little annoying, just because I felt like he regressed more. Yes. I felt I was a little heartbroken when like he goes to talk to Doctor Stone and he's like, just basically like riffs him down like I can't even help you, like what Niles did to you was like slaughter and everything, and he's like, wow, like can't help him at all and I'm like man like that's just like heartless like, this is like the most heartless yeah, Dr. He Stone he refuses to um to, to take part in the perversion that he that Niles uh, science and magic and everything that he's involved in mm -hmm. well it was so they were was it didn't Silas say like if I would have had your body you know, from the get-go, you know, I could have made you something, something even better than my son. Is it, is it, did you say something like that? You talking about how he had, like, tissue and everything, too, to work with when he made Victor. Yeah. Like, anymore, all, all Cliff is is, like, a brain. It's just a brain inside a robot. And, like, and I was, I was intrigued by, okay, are we going to get Cliff... To and a robot built in the 80s and 90s, not a cyborg built in the 2010s. He, he's like the Tin Man. Like he's, in, he's like the Tin Man. I think it'd be awesome, like if they did a season three where Cliff is on this like trajectory. Let's bring in Doctor Magnus. Let's bring in Doctor Morrow. Like Cliff is like seeking out these other, you know, metallurgists, scientists, robot. Uh, 
people. Like, that would be very interesting to see. Like, who the heck can really help? Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, I've really come to appreciate Timothy Dalton more as an actor. Um, watching this, and then the other day I watched The Rocketeer. I'm like, dang. Timothy Dalton, I'm so sorry I've not appreciated you. So, from what I've heard, um, from what I've heard recently, Robot Man has actually had multiple bodies. So, the um, fact that he was blown to pieces, you know, by Candlemaker's Jesus, um, <laughs> it, it, hope may, maybe next season uh, we'll. Robot Man will have a slightly sleeker design. Yeah, that's what I thought we were going to get. Like, I thought maybe at the end of the season... Well, like it, would have some oh, I did not robot. expect it. I did not expect I didn't it to expect it, bodies this I, season. But once for sure. Progress to it. But, but once with again, the, could have been some sort of reveal of something, like had we actually got the episode we should have received for, for a finale. Well, it might have been something, yeah, because, like... If, if it went like this, how it was supposed to go, and, and his body was destroyed um, the way it was and the way they all got waxed. Um, that's funny. I wonder if that's an idea he had back when he was writing it. Instead of them getting whacked, they get waxed. <laughs> <laughs> he was sitting around watching Wax Museum, that horrible movie that was made in 2005. He watched The Godfather, then he watched Wax Museum. And he's like... Or House of Wax. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, that's what we'll do. Um, I mean, all in all, I liked season two, I think, better. Um, it seemed a little bit more streamlined. I feel like it really had a trajectory... Did you kind of well, if it was planned ten episodes, I mean, they they shortened it by five episodes, and yeah, and even then, it's crazy. Like it was nine episodes, and they sh- they dropped the first three in the f- on the first day. Yeah, cool. it went pretty quick with that. So I mean, we, that was only you know, we were like, dang, like it it makes me like like we talked about like everything's over. One week before fandom. Mm-hmm. You know, so Stargirl ended on Monday and fandom is next week. So it's like everything's like done so they can kind of like kickstart everything back up. So I kind of feel like well, maybe we that's why. Stargirl's they... getting a season two. And then, I mean, for, for the most part, it pretty much seems like. You know, Young Justice Season 4, Doom Patrol Season 3, Titans 3, you know, are all going to be, and probably even Harley Quinn 3, are all going to be over on HBO Max come uh, whenever they, you know, produce and start dropping more. So, um, but I, I, I kind of would have liked a little bit more history on Dorothy's, like, people and culture since you know we kept she kept having the vision of the woman coming to her and the candle maker who looked awesome yeah i think that's the i think that's the whole mystery behind the candle maker like we see we get we see bits of the candle maker bits of the things he can do how powerful he is, like he can invade the underground on that wish and and kill those super powered personalities. Um That was crazy. It, Got rid of Baby Doll. Yeah. That was cool. Right. Killed Baby Doll and, and um uh, what was the name of that fiery one? Um uh, but um mm-hmm. I know we, we, we lost Oh, him. you know what? It could be Katie. Let's I think see. Katie is the flying fire one. We've lost, um, we lost certain personalities in the underground shutting down. Well, I think, I think you know, well, Miranda's eliminating personalities and shutting down different stations in the underground. Um, but, uh, 
the candle maker killed at least two of them, baby yeah. doll and, and Katie. Um, but yeah, just the, the setup of how powerful he is. And then the reveal that he was from Dorothy's ancestors on her mother's side. And like, I'm sure the episode we didn't get or whatever is would probably give us a little bit more information on what he is and, and, and how her people had created him. Let's not romanticize about what we didn't get. Let's talk about what we did get. So in a wrap up, how do you guys feel about season two? Final thoughts. Yeah. Um, I mean, I thought it was really good. Uh, a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, you know, lots of carryover from season one. All the characters, uh, we got so much development in season one that it just like hit the ground running. Um, each character is is still dealing with a lot. Um, like this season, really, especially for a couple of them shows showed themselves how bad of a person they were before before their accident um so they they have a lot to reconcile from their past uh the really really good season uh lots of good character stuff um i i am a little sad about the fact that it's a cliffhanger and there's a lot we don't know it's a cliff. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm thankful for this season actually making um, Brendan Fraser a, a verb and an adjective <laughs> I'm a to little, describe certain things in certain situations. I'm a little sad that we didn't get to see as much Brendan Fraser. He was only in one episode, wasn't he? And a little bit of flashbacks to season one, but really only one. No, this season, the only time I recall like seeing him was the flashback of his dad. Yeah, I would say that we only got him that one episode with his dad this season. It would, I don't know. It would have been kind of neat. That's surprising. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been kind of neat if, like, when he was like fighting with like the candle maker, it's Jesus or whatever, or at some point with the, like when they're all being attacked. Yeah. Like with it. Jesus, if how much did you guys like their freaking imaginary crazy. friends? That was crazy. Her, her paper Dr. cutout, Cowboy, uh, shape yeah. person. The Doctor Cowboy's cool. Was real weird. He's like, because he was like, I'm just here to support you in whatever you say or do. Like, and Victor's like, huh. Oh. But I just think it'd be kind of neat to do something where we intercut the scene and have like Brendan Fraser there as a like. In the, the candle maker is making him see himself as human again, like, and like we get, I don't know, just yeah, like. Brandon Fraser should play Jesus. That I mean, yeah, that would have been really yeah. kind of neat. Just like the, <laughs> sur, the surreal look of like his imaginary friend was like himself, like almost like a version of himself older, like he was in what he would want. Um, would have been kind of neat, like just because it, it is weird, like we didn't get that much of, like, the actual actors as we did in season one. Yeah, it was, it was shorter episodes, but, yeah. Um, it has kind of been cool. Because I think especially, like, when you're shooting like, with Brendan Fraser, you could do scenes of, like, his imag him imagining, like, when he's talking to his daughter, like, what he wishes it could be, and it's, like, him in a body, him normal. And, um... Or even, like, you could do something where it's robot man. I'll use that term. Uh, talking to his daughter, and he, you cut to a scene of him imagining, like when she was invited to the wedding, of what he wishes it was, and like it's Brendan Fraser like dancing with his daughter yeah, in her really wedding good. dress, you know, yeah, or really like, good. or cut to a scene of Brendan Fraser holding up, you know, the little girl, like to kind of help perpetuate Cliff's anger, Cliff's frustration, the fact, like, you know, like the scene where. It was really kind of stressful but funny where his leg is locked up and he's like, let me use your phone. And the dude's like, let me get a selfie. And he's like, uh, shout out, blah, 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 blah. Can I use your phone now? <laughs> like, you know, and he's like, and the dude's like, that's, that's deep. That's wicked, man. And uh, 
So yeah, it just would it would have been neat. So my serious thoughts about about Doom Patrol season two, um, I, I like the, the the family history. Like this season was all about family uh, and growth, and and them growing from the past family to the new family. Um, but my my worry about Doom Patrol is probably my worry about Titans. Like, I don't want them to focus so much on the past and expanding the past and past stories, past memories, you know, past mistakes. I I, I want to see I want to see them grow more to the future. And that I agree with that. You know, That's why I feel like I thought some things were resolved in the first season that carried over. And I I get it, but I just yeah. Um, what do you know what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to look at Doom Patrol, okay? Um, my filter I'm changing on is I'm trying – looking at Doom Patrol more like an HBO series than a superhero comic book series. Yeah, I mean it's it's really not. Um, it is entirely something unique un, unto itself. And that's, I think, um, where like, I have a love-hate relationship. Is, like, so, I want certain things out of it, but at the same time, I appreciate what they're giving me because it is so different. Um, so it's, um, you know, talking about, like, being better moving forward. Like, it's... They're not, they're not these characters who um, made a mistake, learned from it, and and got bad, better. You know what I mean? They were, they were pretty much. I mean, they weren't bad people, but they weren't good people either. They were, they were self-absorbed. Um, and and yeah, they were very self-absorbed, and they made a lot of mistakes, and they hurt everybody around them with their actions. So. To, to be good people, to be better people, they have to they have to confront all of the pain that they've caused in the past. So, I mean, that's the story is 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 confronting those different things that they've done and and growing and being better because of it. I mean, that's the story they're telling. They're not telling a a, a superhero story like just so happens these guys kind of save the day as they go even though things get messed up here and there and and all all over the place like they they at least stopped a couple of things from happening or you know reverse some things <laughs> true true it's different but so i'm hoping I mean, yeah you're... that's that that is the story they're telling, you know what I mean? So like you're trying to get trying to skip all that <laughs> into a different part of a different part of a hero's journey. Or like in the curse cycle. But I hope we get our announcement for season three. I, I pretty much feel like season season three is inevitable. Um so I'm not too concerned. I just would like to Maybe here's some details of like, oh, it's confirmed production starts this time or or something. But moving from the Doom Patrol to the wondrous girl that is of the stars, let's talk Stargirl Season 1, fellas. So since we're talking about Stargirl, I thought we'd talk to the best Stargirl I know, Sayla. Sayla, you want to say hi? Mm-hmm. Hi. So you're Stargirl now, aren't you? Mm-hmm. I have a Stargirl costume. So tell me about watching Stargirl. What do you like about the show? I think Stargirl does have her, her costume her, her gloves. Okay. So you like watching the show with me? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. What do you like most about it? Well, I like Stargirl get her costume. So you like her costume? So when we watch the show, don't you like to wear your costume? And you do your costume changes? Uh-huh. Did you really like watching the show with Daddy? Uh-huh. Are you excited for season two? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to say to all the listeners about Stargirl and that you like Stargirl? 
Mm-mm. You all done talking? Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Perfection. If I were to look at, like, I posed this to you guys the other day, like, just looking at all the DC shows, starting with Arrow. You know, not Smallville, because that was, like, its own self-contained universe pre the explosion of comic books. So starting with Arrow and going to every DC show and just looking at their first season, okay. Stargirl is my favorite. Like I, I've rewatched this season already. Uh, and before Stargirl, I would have said the flash, but yes, but see, I almost, I wanted to say the flash, like the flash is my number two and flash is my number two because flash had filler. And that that's Star the girl had no film. That's the model of that type of show and series. True. Which sometimes filler can be good because you feel like you get a story that you're satisfied. You get action pieces and you get cuz it it cracks me up like watching it with Sailor who should be like where's her costume, daddy? Why isn't she wearing her costume? I'm like she don't have it right now, baby. Oh. You know, and so it's like it's funny because like, in The Flash, you're guaranteed he's going to put the costume on in every episode and do something. But, like, in Star Girl's like, she didn't wear it in episode of Sailor's like, ah! I'm with her. I'm with Sailor. Um, this is Star Girl about Courtney. They, they, did, they did do a lot more costume in Star Girl for her and the other characters than they did in Titans Season 2. Oh, my gosh, hey, yes. Man, hey, man, James. Let's not even go down that. <laughs> Titans is like, what? What is costume? Yeah. They're like, we'll give you a good, great costume in a flashback. Thanks. In one episode. In the last episode, we'll give you a nightly costume. You're welcome. And that was kind of expected. But I really love the pacing of Stargirl, the look of Stargirl, the feel. Um... I, I mean, I just loved everything about it. Like, this is one of those shows I never thought, like, if I was, like, going to recommend a superhero show for someone to watch, like, this would be... I'd be like, yeah, Stargirl. They're like, who? Yeah, exactly. But I told my brother, I said, you know, if you want to watch something, like, with the kids, like, dude, watch Stargirl. And he was like, huh? And I'm like, yeah, let me let me tell you about this. Stargirl. Like, and, and, and I'm a very critical person. <laughs> I, I, and... Or negativity, whatever. I have nothing. I have nothing. There's nothing in this that, like, I didn't like. I felt was wasted. I felt was like, yeah, no, I loved it all. Dr. Ivo, freaking awesome. This underground lair, his, you know, being a lizard, the Dragon King space, awesome. And how he treats his daughter, you know, the whole Shiv thing, awesome. Solomon Grundy, you know. Even, you know, <laughs> that was awesome. Like, awesome. It was done well. It wasn't too cheesy. All the villains were done amazing. Their motives were amazing. Uh, okay, my wife made a Cerebro joke. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day. My, my thing like, is... That's what brainwave and Cerebro, my, yeah. My thing is, um, I, I told you, like... And she... Like, you gotta think how long comics have been around and how many people back in the 60s would... Creating idea, do it over at Marvel. Take that same idea, go work for DC and do the same thing. Just retweak it. Uh, Thanos. Thanos, Dark Side, Man Thing, Swamp Thing. Yep. You know, Namor, Aquaman. I mean, it just <laughs> back and forth. Um, you know, Deathstroke, Deadpool. Like, it, it goes on and on. I So I mean, like you you just run into. I mean. Just, the X Men ripped off Doom Patrol. Uh, no, they didn't. Yeah, Doom Patrol was printed before. Some people, the X-Men some people, some people like to say Doom Patrol is a rip off of Fantastic Four too. So, I mean, even though Doom Patrol and X Men are kind of closer related, um, uh, some similarities are there between Fantastic Four and Not and Doom know. Patrol. Hold on, Tyler. Tyler's got to show me that Doom Patrol came out before X Men. It did. Same year, I believe. X Men came out like summer of 1962. 
I remember right. All right, let's look. First appearance, My Great Adventure, June 1963. So let's say X-Men. Came out like July or September of 62. X-Men number one, September 63. Doom Patrol came out first. Doom Patrol dropped a few months But that wasn't before. Doom Patrol like it is today. It still had the chief in a wheelchair. With Robot his, Man. Robot Man with his misfits and outcasts of heroes that nobody wanted. <laughs> it's comics, man. Everybody ripped off everybody. Like... And sometimes, yep. I, and I mean, the biggest thing is I think in that case, like, I think sometimes it's an idea that just exists in the zeitgeist. Persecution, okay. outlaws. Okay, okay. But when X-Men started, it was really good. Do Patrol, and yeah. Yeah, I mean. And then, and then Chris, and then X-Men went downhill, hey. and Chris Claremont took over. Okay. Chris, and then Doom Patrol. Hey, Doom, Doom okay, Patrol's been around thing. for the okay. exact same amount of time. It's, I guess and it's, it's just, still here, too. It's just one of those things where everything goes back and forth. But like, X-Men, yes, is more widely recognized. And that's why Stargirl took Cerebro, okay? But, okay, so... Yeah, all right? Of course I do. <laughs> I'm, I'm a protege of Phil, who knows everything when it comes to comics. Um, so, I started rewatching. I have notes. Yeah, thank you, Google. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I started rewatching Stargirl from the beginning with Sela. And here's some things I picked up. First of all, you know, we it opens on Christmas, the season closes on Christmas. So it's bookended. Beautifully. Like, if this was the one season we got, it would suck, but you could look at it like, okay, I'm good. Like, it, it's bookended beautifully. Like, um, it's perfect. It's perfect. But here's things I noticed. When we first meet teenage Courtney, she's listening to Hanson's Oombop acoustically, yes. but it's the more recent um, recording of the older, as Hanson is now. Compared to when the series closes, it's Hanson's Mbop as it was recorded back in the 90s. Yeah, the like, original hey, 90s version. Um, but here's some of the, the cool stuff I noticed is Courtney's walking around Blue Valley and sees a dad and a daughter having dinner together. It's the same dad and the daughter that are in the last episode that Icicle walks up and talks to. Yes. Um, when she says something's wrong with my daddy and it's like freaking out. My dad's already a good person. Yes. Oh, it's the same. Uh, it's the same family. And what I, and what and that was funny is I had watched the pilot like three times and there's stuff I had forgotten. Like we see shade in the first episode. Yeah, we did. You know, so, you know, he attacks and he pulls, um, we see his, like, Dr. Midnight. yeah, Dr. Midnight, he or pulls Hourman. him One back. Hour Man gets punched down. So you can kind of assume that Hour Man escapes out the back to go get his wife and then Grundy, you know, gets right. him. Um, yeah, I need to watch the opening scene. Yeah, but Shane was definitely there. And, like, I forgot we saw Sandman. We saw Wesley Dobbs on the stairs. Yep, Sandman was yep. there. Um, so I don't remember seeing Green Lantern. No, you don't see Green Lantern. You see, you see, um, uh, what do you call it? The Flash's that. helmet. Yeah. You now that. you do have to think this is a new pre post Crisis Earth two. Oh, we got to see JJ. We got to see JJ. So it makes me wonder what they're trying to work out with that being post Crisis Earth two. Um, but yeah, we we got T Shade right there from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And I think it was cool. Like he got re-revealed to us at the end of the season. And you're like, oh, oh yeah, we yeah. forgot he was there. Um, Except for those little, well, not little, but those those glasses I mean, in the shadow of the picture. And here, here's something oh, I'm, painting. I'm gonna throw out there to you guys. What if Icicle that we were in this series with was actually Icicle Junior, and his dad was the original Icicle? Because the way his parents talk to him, like, they knew and talk about it. Like, wouldn't that be an interesting, like, twist instead of his son being, like, Icicle Jr.? Like, he was Icicle Jr.? Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, his son did have cold powers, though. 
or at least we're starting to develop cold powers. And the only the only real the only version of Icicle Jr. that I know is from Young Justice, and he's a bad guy, but he's also um, friends with Superboy. Yeah, um, he, he's more they like kinda, they kind of have a, 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 a love hate relationship with each other. I mean, there was Icicle Jr. was in uh, Smallville. They just called it, it was Icicle Jr. Even though like they never. Because they oh, reference yeah, his father. Right. That's my first introduction to him. Yeah. Then I don't. They don't really. I think they call him like Junior like one time in like a passing. Um. But no, like. Well, I, and he visits his dad in the hospital who had his abilities. Um. Can we all agree that Starman's a dick? <laughs> yes. Like I mean, straight up rewatching again, I'm like, you are not like those lines that he gives could be done from a sense of compassion and like love, but it just comes off as an a-hole when he's Thank talking you. to Pat, you know, and there's only a the five year difference between Starman and Pat. Right. And, but Starman, the way he talks to Pat and like, and the way he's like, I was his sidekick. You know who else was a sidekick? Kato. And the green Hornet owes his life to Kato. Damn right. You know who else is a psychic? Robin. But Robin was also his own hero, too. So, you know, don't make Stripesy more like the team manager. Okay? Well, you know, I'm glad that they expanded on it because he was also with the Seven Soldiers of Victory. And um, but there's eight. they did their own thing. And a couple of them were sidekicks. Yeah. But there's eight. Yeah, we know that. But I'm just saying, like, he just, like, was really a jerk. And I was like, man, like, I would not, like, you know, Starman was his good friend. But I'm like, Starman, like, I feel like treated you like crap. And I feel like that's coming. Well, we we only do get to see one interaction, not the years he was his friend and his sidekick and, you know, his mechanic and his Alfred and. What have you? <laughs> you know. Um, so. So do you think? Because the mom didn't really confirm or deny whether she ever had a relationship with so with the Sylvester. Yeah, she did. That's yeah. the whole point of Sam Curtis showing up. Yeah, Sam Curtis is her dad. Yes, but. The whole point was yeah, her dad Sam looked Curtis enough dad, like Starman, Starman is not her father. for like that old picture for Courtney to mix them up. Like, so I mean, Starman is, I mean, even in the comics, like he's not her dad. Like, no. it is Sam Curtis. Okay, I know. Yeah, okay. Sam right. Curtis what's comics. the point of bring, what's the point of having Sylvester still be alive for season two? That's what I'm curious about. Because well, one, yeah, that, I don't know. one, because it builds doubt in Courtney that she's the rightful heir and that she should be have the cosmic staff. So you think he's going to want it back? Oh, heck yeah. That's the whole reason he's looking for Pat. Like, is he wants his staff back. And I wonder if it's even really him or there's some or other angle to it. So you think that's not our star, man? That he really did die? I think he really died and maybe it's a like a reanimated, like reprogrammed, like maybe they took him and they wiped his mind and had him, like Dr. Uh, oh, I Isto mean, had it, and like Brainwave, they reprogrammed his they, mind. I was going to say, they, they Winter Soldier Starman? Yeah, basically. I mean, or something, like something along those lines, um, because, and I, it's going to, I think, story drama wise, it comes back, well, now I'm back, so give me my staff. No, no, it's my staff now. Like, you died. You know, so it's going to come down to that, and then. It's going to build this awkwardness with this relationship that Pat and Courtney have built up. Yeah. And now Pat's unsure because he has this relationship with Starman, but he's also going to be unsure because where have you been? Like, what happened to you? Um, unless it's something like Dr. Fate, you know, took, like, showed up, put Starman, like, in some sort of, like, right. suspended animation or sitting to, like, the house of mystery. Yeah, because to him, he was he was dead. Because you know, Starman was outside of the house, yeah, in the field with Pat when he died. Um, I'm curious about where that 
at Pat's ex. They never mentioned his ex wife. Nope. Mike's mom. Nope. Like she is never mentioned. That's correct. So that could be something in season two that builds drama because we have Pat and Barbara as a tighter unit now at the end of this season. You know, and this this series is supposed to focus on family. Um, well, let me throw this here. Let me throw this to you. What if uh, Starman, like so Sylvester, ends up taking Mike under his wing and teaching Mike stuff? See, I the one thing I expected was not maybe not to happen, but even an illusion of Mike finding the pin. I really thought Mike was going to find that pin. Like, I, even I if it was just the. the pen, the ed- like, he's going to get this pen at the end of the season. Like, even if it's just him picking up the pen to write something and clicking it, yep. like, as an illusion, like, I, that was one thing I thought. The one thing I knew had to happen was the gift. It'll be interesting if, if next season his friend Jakeem comes over and they need a pen for something, they're doing homework or whatever, and he goes to Courtney's room and tosses him that pen and Jakeem Thunder. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's really easy to write. Like, Jakeem has a crush on Courtney, and he's, like, snooping in her room, you know? Yep. For that awkward, my best friend thinks my sister is hot kind of thing. Like, Right. Um, Mike had the best kill, hitting Icicle with the truck. I didn't see that coming. Dude, that awesome. him taking the drill to Sportsmaster's back? That was awesome. And then when, and then when Pat was like, Hey, uh, bring the drill with you. <laughs> but you know what was one of the coolest scenes that if it's like a blink and you miss it is when Sportsmaster has the bat behind him and he bounces the baseball bat to his other hand. Like he's like sitting there playing with it. He is bouncing it back. And I'm like, dude, that was, that was cool. Like Crusher, call me Crusher. Okay. He's like, see ya. Yeah. No, seriously, yeah. call me Crusher. I, I kind of think that the, um, the young JSA shouldn't have really stood a chance um, hand-to-hand with the likes of Sportsmaster and Tigress. Like, I don't either, but there they're, are some... they're supposed to be some of the, some of the most skilled kill, killers in the DC universe, and, and um, these high schoolers are fighting them. I, I like some of, like, they did some really great moves for Courtney... Like, I think it was in yeah. the last episode where she, like, does the kick, but she grabs yeah, her leg and she comes and up, she grabs it. her foot in midair, yep. and then lets it go and bring, yeah, brings down that reverse kick on him. And, I mean... Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Did the you choreography get, for the show was pretty good. Did you guys catch that when she comes to the school? And this made me kind of wonder, by the first faculty staff member she meets is in the secretary in the office... I feel like maybe she was brainwashed already because the way she's acting and talking to Courtney. And if you notice, the American Dream Foundation is who canceled the uh, gymnastics team. I, just, oh, I thought that was I just, didn't know that. just interesting because Courtney, when she says, you guys had a gymnastics team last year, and she says it real quick that it was canceled by the American Dream. Oh, hmm. well... You know, I mean, it, she's the secretary in the office. The principal of the school is the fiddler. I mean, she could just play a little music, and the secretary is controlled. Exactly. It's the same. Brainwashed, like, level one of creating the community, the school that they want. Right. Just a thought, you know, like, it's nothing in there, like, to really pick apart, but just a thought I had. We do meet Henry in the first episode, and he is a D-bag. I forgot um, Henry, right? Am I mixing up the two? Henry, yeah. Brainwave Jr.? Henry. Yeah. I was like, Joey, that's the good one. Joey, yes. Um, I forgot he called Yolanda a slut in the first episode. Henry did? Yeah, Henry did. He comes up to her at the lunch table and says something to her. He's like, I smell slut. Yeah. Oh, wants to see what, what pictures or what new pictures are in her phone that kind of stuff because he grabs Courtney's phone he's like what's in here are you like her and Courtney's like give it back and punches him and I was like yeah that's what we forgot yeah. about that because when we get to the episode about Wildcat this is like episode 2 or 3 3 it's 4 or whatever 
Um, I thought it was uh, the shift check that set the uh, photo up. It is. It wasn't really Henry. It's, it, it makes you – later I feel like they, they try to cast some doubt on it. Like was she influencing him in some way because of who she was and who he is? Yeah. Um, I didn't really think Henry said it out at all. But then he, he, he like asked for forgiveness at the end. Well, he's like – he's being manipulated by her. He could easily be um, influenced by his father. Um into behaving a specific way. And I kind of, um, I like, I mean, his death was powerful. Yeah, it was. I would have liked maybe one more episode with him just as he's unraveling. Like you said, like maybe everything in his life he realized was like his father influencing or making him do it. And he's like really unraveling more as a person because he never felt like he made his own choices. Um, but... Can we just talk about like the like the gut punch moment is we have a scene of Yolanda talking to Rick and he's ready to kill Solomon Grundy. And she's like, we don't kill. It would be easy. Blah, blah, blah. She's giving that kind of superhero speech. Mm-hmm. And then she fights all those sand zombie people. And then all of a sudden I was like, I got excited because, you know, the dude pulls off the hood and it's. Henry and I'm like, yes, he didn't die. And then she realizes it's really brainwave and just <sighs> slashes his throat without hesitation. I texted you immediately. Yes, you did. I was like, yes, this is the character development we need. Yes. And, I mean, it is <laughs> because it shows she is cool and collected in her thoughts until her emotions took over. Yes. So, you know, she's like being that spark towards Rick to this, to guiding and now she has to carry that weight. Not only did she, like, do what she did, but she literally talked him out of doing it. The wildcat becomes the wild card. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> she, you know, she, in a sense, saves Rick from the pain that she now has and the weight that she carries. Yeah, you can see it on her already just as they're out on the bleachers in that scene outdoors. And that's going to carry mm-hmm. over into season two as a great way to position her her character. Um, you know what I really want to see happen in season two? Green she, she No. Forget Green Lantern. Because we're not going to get Green Lantern. No, F you. We're not going to get Green Lantern. He's too big for no. them. We're getting, we're getting a Green Lantern show. So if we get anything, it'll be off, like screen references and then we'll get some sort of like flashback like just stunt actor we're not we won't get a Listen, though, character we're gonna get we're gonna get uh diggle as a green lantern on that superman show so why can't no, we're we not. Announce, announce no, we're, no we're not we probably we're, unlikely not. no because david ramsey's not signed anything nor even talked about coming back after arrow's done he's he's walked away done no. so unless unless he comes out. Sanders, you're wrong. <laughs> um, but <laughs> Brian just tackled Tyler. You know why crocodiles? You know why crocodiles have trouble with teeth? They, they, they're all mad because they got their teeth and no toothbrush. I want to see Yolanda just walk in and like punch her mom and dad in the face, and then round house. So that would be satisfying. No, I, I mean, I just want her to be like. I want them to see something like Wildcat and then her like tell her parents I'm Wildcat like later on after like you hear them talk about like how like heroic blah 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 and then she's like yeah Fafanopheles <laughs> but um, how are we Chuck? yeah I'm thinking maybe that's something that Starman could help out with I'd be going to the old JSA headquarters and checking crap out like seeing what else is there you know, when Courtney was there and took all that stuff. Um, I really liked Henry uh, Henry Thomas's voiceover as Chuck. It was really good. I feel like I want to see a little bit more with Beth. Yeah, man. She didn't because wear her costume most of the time. She didn't wear a costume. She was growing into her character. Her parents basically don't care about her. She's like a wonderful... She's the parents of her parents. Yeah. <laughs> she, and she's a wonderful person. Like... You just yeah, she was she... taking care of her parents, making sure they had their lunch to go and stuff. And when she finally got a friend, it was it was yeah. something. It was different. She's that person that's so happy and good all the time that everyone forgets about. 
because they forget that she has problems to where I feel like she yeah. gets ignored. Yeah. And that's going to be kind of her angle is like, she's going to have problems because everyone's so wrapped up in themselves that they forget about her. And now she doesn't even have her friend Chuck. So that's like what she's going to have problems with. And, you know, we, we, you know, I was reading, we'll see if the production is shift the CW or if it's going to be on the CW. Uh, I hope it only airs on CW. I mean, it's I do not the product. I don't, I do not want the production shifted to the CW. Hell yeah, James. I mean, they that would destroy the pacing. It would mess up the storytelling. Um, it would become a new show. It would, it would yeah, be, it would be, it would be completely different. It wouldn't it be the same. In season two. I mean, we haven't got that far yet, but uh, it would be like a Superboy season two. There you go. Like even my wife was was like, if, watch this Star Girl, the first episode of Star Girl. She's like, my gosh, the, the quality of this is great. I mean, they yeah. sh- they, if they expanded it at anything more than sixteen episodes, three more episodes. If they expanded it anything more than sixteen episodes, we're in trouble. It would do a disservice. I kind of look at it like Black Lightning. They shoot Black Lightning in Georgia. They were shooting yeah. Star Girl in Georgia. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. like, um, Black Lightning, you know, has a little bit different of a production uh, behind the scenes because it was originally being developed at Fox, and Fox passed. So the CW took it, picked it up. That's why I think the first season stands out a little bit more than the latter seasons do, because I feel like the latter seasons were more CW-fied. Sure. Um, so I'm really hoping that Stargirl will kind of be a little bit more like that, you know, and they'll play in it maybe, like they'll have some more fun with uh, the fact it's on another Earth than what we're used to seeing. Um yeah, because everything on on the CW is all uh, Earth Prime. Yep. Because I told you, it'd be kind of because, like, you know, we always had Pat like driving an old car, listening to like there's always like this '50s music. I'm like, it'd be kind of cool if like you gave the the costume designs or whatever. Like, all the adults had this like retro '40s like fashion style, like a modern '40s, and then all the kids were like modern '50s, like. And everything, just just little things like maybe throw in some dialogue about alt history that we don't know about because it is Earth Two. We can have some fun with because remember, original Earth Two was very like 1950s sci-fi. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know, so that, I mean, that would be cool to play around with. Um, uh, that's where Harry came from. But I, I mean, I I could not a plus for this series. Like I could not recommend star girl more i mean salo loves it and i i just to this is this series was everything i had hoped it would be and more i wanted a show that i could watch with my kids i wanted something i could feel comfortable with my kids watching that was positive that was fun that was family oriented because i was already upset that so much of the content that dc had out was not for that they're not they're not grooming and building the next generation of fans. They were when we were kids. I mean, we had, we had Superman the anime series, we had Batman the anime series, Justice League, um, you know, Batman Lois Forever, and, Batman and Robin, Kid Friendly stuff. Lois and Clark. Yep, Lois and Clark. Um, now, it's like, screw the kids. Yeah, everything's like, we'll be dark. And, you know. It's 2000 something. They're not. They're not really building that next level. I mean, we've had a lot of failed. I mean, even Young Justice season three proof like they took it more in for the adult fans that wanted Young Justice. Um, season one is still fun to watch with the kids. We watched season three with the kids, but you could tell like the pacing and certain things like it was a little bit more disjointed. Um, but what are the kids got? They got Teen Titans Go. And superhero girls. Yeah. Yeah. Like, come on. And, I mean, they we, we pretty much... You know what would surprise me? Is if at fandom they revealed there's going to be a season two of Justice League action. Boom. That'd be cool. That would be awesome. Put my buddy Jason J. Lewis back to work as the voice of God. I mean, Superman. 
you, you just said Chase was the voice of God. On Earth. So you gotta pay attention to the extra stuff I throw on here. Um, Let me tell you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a deaf guy, okay? I don't hear everything all the time, okay? I miss some stuff. I know. Um, but seriously, like, I just, I say that, like, as a defender for children because, you know, this stuff meant so much to me when I was younger, and I'm, I want to share it with my kids, and I want my kids to have something where I don't have to explain things all the time, or, like, cut around things or skip stuff, because, um, the content is just too much for them, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff I get. I let my kids watch that maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. Yeah, they were really enjoying the boys the other night. <laughs> Shut up, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> they were not. He had gills on his stomach, Dad. They were not. Um. But yeah, Star Girl is just. I don't know. It's it's so funny that that's the character that I'm like, the show that I'm in love with. Like that I would watch over any of the other shows. And I'm really enjoying, like, Sayla and I, I think we're on episode, I think we're on shift part one in our full rewatch. And Sayla's already like, where's season two, daddy? It's not season two tonight. She even said it tonight when Brian and I were sitting here. She's like, they do season two for Star Girl? Yeah, I'm a baby girl. Not yet, baby. Well, when they were having dinner and I'm sitting with them, they were like, hey, what are you going to do for Halloween? What are you going to be? Uh, man, I don't know. Like, I have some ideas. And, uh, Sailor's just like, yeah, I'll be Stargirl. Uh, hey, bro, I'm Stargirl season coming out. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. It just ended up. Mm-hmm. Well, they need to drop that. <laughs> they need to put it out right now. And, and Sailor's so like, that's all she talked about. <laughs> that's it is great. I mean, she loves watching it so much. But when we were watching the final episode, if Courtney had a costume on, Sayla put her Star Girl costume on, and as soon as the scene would change without Courtney in a costume, Sayla's doing a costume change. Like, it was adorable. Yeah. Like, that's awesome. So, and that, I mean, that's what I wanted for my daughter. You know, she's really gotten into Supergirl right now, too, but I don't think she's connected with the show. And. I'm actually going to rewatch season one of Supergirl here soon because I've just kind of been wanting to um, see how that season was. Like looking at the idea of like it was on the CW or on the uh, CBS to the CW, like what that can look like, what what was lost, what was gained, um, besides just like actors and things like that. Any other final thoughts on the greatest show that DC has produced called Stargirl? Is it the greatest show that it's they produced? It's a bold now? claim, but it was a damn good season. Of season one. Everything I say is based on the first season. Because you can't compare a show that's been on for eight seasons to a show that just started. Now, you can go season by season and compare stuff. But I can't say Stargirl's better than The Flash. You know, because then I have to go back and look at, well, how is Flash season one? Or say, like, Star Girl's better than Arrow. Well, how is Arrow season one? Star Girl still wins. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't compare overall. I think, I think once you get to season three of Arrow, then Star Girl beats it. Star Girl beats Arrow season one. Yeah. Like, because Arrow season one was such a hard, like, acceptance of, like, okay. This is not Batman. Yeah, like, you guys wanted to do Batman but couldn't, so you decided to do Green Arrow. And I always feel like that screen arrow is like disservice in live action. It's like, we can't do Batman. I was saying, it's kind of like how it was when he was written. Yeah. But he was written by a different company. Like, I want to write Batman, but we got to write. <laughs> he was created by a different company to compete with Batman. So he was, in essence, very, very, very similar because they were trying to compete with Batman. So it makes sense that they would have these similarities. But, I mean, he's evolved so much in the comics um, but then when they bring him in live action, like they wanted to do Bruce Wayne on Smallville, couldn't do it. Put in Oliver Queen. Yeah. But they could do it. Mm-mm. It was vetoed and shut down. 
because there was a, because much like Superman and Batman properties, they want to keep them separate. Like it's it boggles it boggles my mind listening and reading about how Warner Brother controlled properties that we ever got Superman Returns and Smallville at the same time. Yeah, but Warner Brothers own pretty Smallville. much they do own it all. They could, but they don't want it. They don't want to dilute their property. And that's a stupid thing. Which is, once again, like, that's why they killed the Suicide Squad off on Arrow. They didn't want to have a Suicide Squad on TV and in the theaters, so they killed off every character that was attached to the Suicide Squad. That's why and they literally cut literally four years later, they want it all. <laughs> that's but why it's different people, and they understand that we all, that we want it all, and people can handle it all. That's why, I mean... I was shocked as much as they ended up using it. even different audiences who are watching it on TV and some of the, you know, some of the audiences are different when you go to, like, big screen and live action. You know, a lot of the general public who's watching these movies in the theaters, they're not watching them on TV in these shows. Right. And the people who are know how to, how to do it. They know exactly that I mean, it's they, a different thing when they go to the theater. They cut Harley Quinn out of Arrow. Yeah. Because we're gonna have the Harley Quinn and the Suicide Squad movie. Um, I'm very surprised that they. They, they That's why they pulled Deathstroke off of Arrow. It's because they wanted to use Deathstroke. That's why they killed off Deadshot in Arrow. Because they wanted him on the movies. And that, they brought back. They eventually brought Deathstroke back for like a couple episodes to kind of tie up an arc. No, they brought Joker back. Did they bring Deathstroke back? No. He, nope. appe- he appeared later as Floyd Lawton or Baby. It was on the Flash when they when they went to Earth uh, Two. And I, I have to look back at the piece. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, they they sabotaged themselves because they didn't want stuff to carry over. And then it boggles my mind how they got away with using why they wanted to put Superman in Supergirl with all the stuff that you read about. And at the same time, I mean. Superman came to Supergirl in season two, which was 2016, the same year BVS was released. So, I mean, that's crazy right there. Just because you read about everything else, they're like, no, 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 don't, don't look at that. No, this, yeah. this is what you do. This. Okay. But we want to use this character. No, 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 no. This character's over here. That's, yeah, it's stupid. And, and, you know, they were like, all these characters are over here, but it's like, well, you're not even connecting the thing, so what's the point? Any other final thoughts, dear gentlemen, as we wrap it up? If you haven't watched Stargirl yet, which probably boggles my mind for anybody who's listening, but um, yeah, that's, that's the definitely one watch it and share it with your family and friends. Watch Stargirl. Do it. Do it watch Doom Patrol. Oh, Do it. Do it now. All right. On that do note, you Arnold Schwarzenegger. Do it now. Do it. Do it now. I just think when I hear "Do it," I think I think of Arnold. I think of Emperor slash Senator Palpatine, and then I think of Ben Affleck or not Ben Affleck, Ben Stiller in a uh, Starskin Hutch. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. Look in the sky.